I do solemnly swear that I will support that I will support, obey and defend, obey and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and that I will discharge the duties of my office, and that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. With fidelity. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we do our good work at. As you can see, we have ceiling tiles missing. We have water spots on the ceiling tiles. If you look at the carpet, this carpet is over 35 years old. Captain Nutz, why don't you tell us a little bit about how bad conditions are uh, and were, at least in some of these uh, the places in the uh, police building? Well, I've been here for 28 years, and it's the same carpet when I walked in, and it's the same carpet here now. So um, it's, it's very old, very smelly, very dirty, and um, it makes me sneeze all the time. So <laughs> it's a great thing to have um, brand new carpet, and we really appreciate that. So we're going to take a look now and see the difference that the old carpet and the new carpet, the difference it made. But before we do, tell us a little bit about your motivation for wanting to help City Hall, and especially the police building, look and smell better. We're happy that you can breathe and you don't have to sneeze coming into work every day. But honestly, it was our pleasure. I mean, we're in the floor covering business and this is just us doing our part. This was nothing. Thank you for the work that you do. You're out there every day protecting every citizen with your own life, so thank you. The whole department thanks you. You're welcome. Well, this is civic spirit. This is the, what we're trying to do to make Harrisburg change and become a different, better place, a better city. And it starts right here with our government center. We want it to be the image of the new Harrisburg. So let's see what the changes that they made. So come on in and we can see the difference in our elevator right at the beginning. This once was a dirty, old, green, stained carpet and now it is it's just brightened up the whole uh, elevator and people don't feel so bad coming in and we're going up to our second floor where we'll see even better so you can see the difference between the elevator and the carpet that was before and if you look ahead you'll also see that touch of color was able to replace this carpet going that leads into our police building. And uh, it is like night and day. We had a vision, which was that we were going to fix up City Hall in this public safety building and we were going to improve the morale of all the workers and all the visitors to this building. Slowly but surely, hallway by hallway, room by room, uh, corridor by corridor, We've been replacing the carpet and we've been painting and uh, it's just been a continuous progression and here we are today in this absolutely beautifully made over room. Uh, I, my understanding is we have new flooring, we have new ceiling tiles, we have fresh paint, all new furniture, beautiful artwork, even toys for the families, all made possible by the Rotary Club of Harrisburg. So let's have a big round of applause. <laughs> For that. We're, we're also doing something, I think, transformative in thinking about language. Uh, this room was formerly called the, the victim's room. That sort of had a, uh, uh, not the right tone associated with it. And so, hereby today, we are going to rededicate and rename this room the Rotary Club of Harrisburg Family Support Room. And I think that captures, captures what we're all trying to do here. If you've been to City Hall, or, or even if you haven't, please come down and check it out. Things have changed. We're trying to make it a little bit more visitor friendly, and uh, we have a few new exhibits, and we're going to be changing exhibits as time goes on, so come often and stay and see what you can learn. Welcome to the 2014 Harrisburg St. Patrick's Day Parade on WHBG TV 20.
I'm Chuck Wingate. Nice to meet you. I'm, Hi. The, I'm the one who got you into this mess. Fantastic. Glad to be here. Great to have you here. Looking forward to this. Well, I didn't know if you'd been here before or not, but we thought... I have, but not, uh, not since all the new additions. So okay. Okay. Be nice to Great. see how things have changed. Well, things have changed a lot over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, quick background is Bethesda Mission's 100 years old this year. Uh, I wasn't here that whole time. I might look like it, but I'm not. Um, the fact is this building was constructed in 1902 by the Pennsylvania Railroad. And I know you like history. So uh, this was a sh hostel for train crews. So the transportation center for the middle of Pennsylvania was on the other side of 7th Street. So a man would get his Y card because the, the uh, cornerstone there says P-R-R-Y-M-C-A. So you get his Y card. It was the first building in Harrisburg with an indoor swimming pool. And while the pool at Bethesda might have been cool for biblical reasons, um, we covered it over for more bed space. Uh, so we bought it from the railroad in 1934 for $10,000. Mm -hmm. And as they had opened the Rutherford and the Enola yards, they didn't really need this as much. So. Um, we renovated this building five years ago. We spent four and a half million uh, on that. So it's a brand new 111 year old building. Declaration Day, Memorial Day is often, too often confused with veterans. Memorial Day is actually for those that died in the service of this country. The ones that never had the opportunity to become a veteran. So today, the veterans, we stand and we put out flags and we have parades and we make sure that our duty as veterans, that we do not forget those that died in defense of this country. We will never forget those that died for our freedoms. We will always pay homage to them. So when you see a veteran and you see a veterans organization, keep in mind that Memorial Day is in honor of all those that never got an opportunity to stand where I am today as a veteran. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'm here with my band, The Original Substance, and it's an honor to play at Arts Fest. It's um, a beautiful celebration of Memorial Day, the, the weekend, and it's such a beautiful city, and it's, it's going to be a beautiful weekend, so it's, it's going to be great to play here again. birthday America. What year did America gain its independence? Is it A, 1767, B, 1776, or C, 1676? B, 1776. 1776. Wait, how old are you? Since the 4th of July is considered America's birthday, how old is America now? Is it A, 238 years old, B, 300 years old, or C, 220 years old? It is 238. Wow, you're 238 years old. Two cheeseburgers? Is that what I heard, two cheeseburgers? Today is uh, actually our fifth annual Easter Seals Grill-a-thon. Basically what we do is we get with Easter Seals here at the Hilton and we do a grill-a-thon all day. Try to get the local community involved, so we go out and we try to get, you know, local celebrities. Uh, Al Ganoza was here earlier. Sarah Bozich's coming later. The mayor's coming over at noon, uh, and it's really just a great event that goes on all day. The key to good grilling is the proper yeah, sear, the proper sear on the meat, and that's what we're going for here. We're trying to lock those juices inside the meat. It has to be done at a consistent hot temperature. We need a really good marinade.
honored by your presence. I am here to say thank you for participating in Kapona 2014. Kapona, as you know, means sparkling waters, and the waters are certainly sparkling today. It's a celebration of our regional diversity. We come from the powwow where we've been celebrating our historic diversity of the island, and now as I look out upon you, we celebrate the great central Pennsylvania diaspora. It is a, it is a absolute honor that you are here. We hope that you will be a part of Kapona's to come forever in the future. Shall we, we let the games begin, Mayor? I think so. I will, yeah. we'll, we'll try the top three. They've already been judged, so we're going to be presenting the awards. But I said I couldn't present an award unless I could stand by it, right? That's you know, exactly right. It, it, exactly. It's, got, it's got to taste good. So uh, we're going to try the Verde green chilies. We tried the red chili. They were all terrific. I agreed with the judges. So here we go. Here we go. If you'd like to hold that I for a be, moment. I would be more than happy to hold that. First thing you have to do is cleanse your palate. So you've got a great consistency. You've got to be very fair. Mmm. Mm. Tastes like a pork or a chicken? It tastes like a chicken to me. It tastes like a chicken. Uh, it yeah. yeah. Uh, not too spicy. Um, not too thick. A light, a light consistency. And uh, I like it. We've gathered on this occasion, normally just called September the 11th, but since 2001, September the 11th has never been quite the same for us in America or around the world. It is a day of remembrance, remembrance of all those that have been sacrificed one way or the other due to the fact that we had groups that didn't like the way the world was running and decided to take life into their own hands. There were those that were on duty as firefighters, police officers, emergency medical personnel. There were others that were just going to work that day. And all of them lost their lives. That is something that we hardly can understand and the ramifications of that. But the ramifications are that even this, 13 years later and forever, we will remember 9-11-01 as a day that changed the world, changed history for everyone. Today is what's known as Run Day, where the cadets from the Career Academy are taking and placing themselves on different apparatus for scenarios that they'll experience in real life, real time. Uh, instructors act as their, their coaches, their guides. Uh, they're honing the skills that they've already acquired through practical evolutions, uh, both practically and academically. It's been good quality stuff that's gonna help us out on, on the street. So, and then obviously when we get on the street, we'll learn some tips and tricks there that'll help us do our job a little bit better. It's good to see almost a full house um, tonight here to celebrate the graduation of Pennsylvania's 15 newest firefighters um, who are sitting before you. The class is the 51st Hack Fire Academy, and they're made up of recruits from the city of Harrisburg, city of Altoona, and the borough of Chambersburg. Um, and sitting before in front of you are recruits today, firefighters this afternoon, and in 10 years, the future leaders of the fire service. It requires a lot of specific equipment and a tremendous amount of specific training uh, invested in these gentlemen to be able to do this work. And the reason being is these types of incidents are extremely low frequency. They generally don't happen very often and they're extremely high risk. I think you can understand the guys are hanging 50, 60 feet in the air. If you make a mistake, you can obviously see the risk in that. So because of that, the training has to be very, very stringent how things are done. What is a sinkhole exactly? I think uh, in the public consciousness of Harrisburg, people remember the sinkhole that occurred on 4th Street. Now we're dealing with a sinkhole on South 14th Street. I know the causes for each of those sinkholes is different, but, but what is a sinkhole, Wayne? Um, sinkhole is a, is 
a subsidence feature, right? And so people, especially those from Pennsylvania, uh, coal country, they think of collapsed mines and things like that. It's similar uh, to a collapsed mine, it, which is also a subsidence feature, um, but different in, in how it was caused. Um, subsidence is the downward movement of the, subsur uh, the surface material into a cavern or some, or some underlying um, hole or fracture. Um, sinkholes that, that we've experienced are uh, typically uh, geological underlying limestone geology uh, that has weathered due to um, uh, chemical weathering, uh, water. Water is the mitigating is factor. I learned it's really difficult and uh, there's a lot more that we can do in this city to make it uh, safer for, for everyone, pedestrians, uh, especially the need for more auditory uh, uh, cross signals and just hazards like that, 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 uh, that uh, fire um, outlet right there in the middle of the sidewalk that I've never noticed before, having walked here thousands of times, uh, I sure noticed today. Also, um, just the fact that uh, uh, we have such busy intersections and, and, and continually uh, turning cars. It'd be very difficult to get around this city without, um, without assistance, and, and we need to do better. I appreciate the assistance I've received, but uh, it's not easy. Not easy at all. We're a bunch of students from Messiah College, and we're picking up some trash to do some volunteer work um, to help out the community. Welcome to Reservoir Park. My name is David Botero. I'm with the city of Harrisburg. I'm the, uh, my real title is that I'm the community peace dude. And I work with the, uh, that's really my title, with the, uh, uh, the mayor's office and with the chief of police. So I work in the Harrisburg uh, Police Department. Uh, so welcome, thank you for coming out. Thank you for, in advance, for your altruism, uh, for your um, the mission to serve. I mean, it's so important. This is our 22nd annual day of caring. It's the largest single volunteer event that takes place in our community on an annual basis. Um, the idea really is, as with our supporters, that United Way holds this event um, to be able to connect volunteers in the community in a way to give back and uh, to really do projects where organizations, charities in the community uh, wouldn't be able to get the work done if it wasn't for these volunteers. So it's a, it's a great day and we're really excited about it and again it's the 22nd year we're doing this. We have our 5th anniversary today of the Latino Center. We opened our doors in July of 2010 and uh, today marks our, uh, our 5th celebration. working on a playground for the kids, you know what I'm saying? It's about time once when we say, this our block, act like it.
Oh, wow. He's there. He's there. Oh, boy. Right. One, yes. two, three. for coming out and supporting the webpage FX family today. It's a huge honor and an extraordinary, extraordinary day for us to be in, uh, moving into the city of Harrisburg. One, two, three. Thank you for being here. This is an important step for our Turkish community. Um, really, we are excited uh, to open Turkish Cultural Center. We're looking, this is gonna open a lot of doors for Turkish, Turkish Americans and American friends. Um, thank you. Please make this a home. Uh, this is open uh, for all of your use. As I said, the uh, Senator Stack, uh, use this you know, place to, to the conferences, uh, seminars, anything. So we are happy to get you here. And thank you again for opening Turkish Cultural Center in Harrisburg. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah. You, you have it, Caesar? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. You're going to give us a countdown? Okay. 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 Are you taking pictures? Yeah. One. Take a couple more. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. Yay! Yay! So what we have is a 42-unit uh, condominium for sale building, uh, converted it from uh, an office use. If you'd like to make a donation uh, in person, uh, how does that you to give us a call or go online and let us know um, through our website and someone will meet you here at the donation center. We bring the things in, we ask that they be on hangers, we take anything that's in good condition that can be reused. On behalf of the city of Harrisburg, we congratulate you on your ribbon cutting and we would like to proclaim today, September 9th of September, Tide to Success Day for the city of Harrisburg. Congratulations. Thank you so much. One, two, two three. Toast to the great success of Rubicon. Here, 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 here. This is our grand opening for two new restaurants in Harrisburg. One is called Adlib Craft Kitchen and Bar. It's our three meal a day tavern. And the other is called 1700 Degrees Steakhouse. It's our upscale Great American Steakhouse restaurant. We have a great selection of steaks on the list. One of our favorites is a 32 ounce tomahawk steak that's prepared for two people. We also have a prime ribeye, a 21 day dry aged New York strip, and then a great list of sustainable seafood, appetizer, salads, the whole works. It's Anthony Mikolas. It's one of our signature dishes, and it is grandma's recipe. One of our chef's grandmothers has made this recipe, and it's our secret.
We are here for the grand rededication of the new Arepa City right here in downtown Harrisburg. What a beautiful uh, new space we have. Three times the location of the old Arepa City, which I know is beloved by so many of our viewers. Um, the ability to seat so many more people, quite a transformation. Beautiful walls, modern artwork, and, uh, uh, and the same wonderful food is all. One of my favorite places to eat in Harrisburg and uh, looking forward to, to trying the food at the new location. We should start with the basics. What, what is an arepa? Well, arepa is a stapled uh, bread or sandwich for my native Venezuela. It is made of cornmeal, simple water, sugar, and salt. And it is either grilled, baked, or fried. We offer two of those choices in here, which is grill and fry. So once it's cooked, you cut it open and you can fill them with whatever your, your choice is. Three, two, one, go! And we are officially open. Congratulations to you. And uh, you're officially the first beneficiary of the city of Harrisburg's uh, sash slash ribbon, which you can use for all things. So, there you go. We are talking about parking. A lot has been said about parking, and there's been many changes in Harrisburg's parking system over the past year. But today, we are announcing the launch of a brand new mobile parking app, which is going to do two things. It's one, going to empower businesses and help uh, encourage businesses to market themselves better and uh, potentially validate parking and offer coupons. And two, it's going to make it easier for consumers, for customers, for anyone coming uh, into downtown Harrisburg to park. We allow for you to pay for your parking on your phone. The other thing we allow you to do is if, if there is a restaurant, we allow you to get a validation code from the restaurant to get free parking or a coupon. Um, the app also allows for you to find the local garages and their prices and to find parking availability to sort of really look at where, you know, where, where should I be parking inside the city. We want to just take the time and step back and remember those individuals whose lives have been lost to acts of domestic violence and really commit ourselves as a community to acting, to being proactive in this struggle. We have obviously a DJ in that we have some food, we have some different vendors out there supposedly. We're supposed to have a band and some cheerleaders coming so we have a lot of different things going on. And welcome to Project Homeless Connect 2014. Just a couple things I want to remind us all of. The uh, 2014 point in time count last winter identified some 579 homeless and 104 near homeless adults and children in Dauphin County. That's a total of 683 on just one day. Now if you multiply that times 365, you get 249,295 people in one year. Another way to look at it, it's 498,590 pairs of shoes. It's 747,885 meals in one year. And lastly, it's 37,960 boxes of crayons. So there's another way to look at the statistics for Dolphin County and the city of Harrisburg. Now while the near homeless is down 37% from last year, the homeless population overall has increased 21% or one-fifth, and almost a quarter of those are children. This is Central Pennsylvania Food Bank's second annual Can Hunger event. And what we plan to do today between 11 o'clock right now and 3 o'clock this afternoon is have folks visit the Capitol here and donate canned goods. We're going to line them all the way up the Capitol steps and all the way down both sides of uh, State Street here at the Capitol. And uh, that should be about uh, 2,500 to 3,000 cans. That's what we're hoping to raise. So uh, we'll reach out to the community and hopefully we can, uh, we can get that done. And I want to thank, uh, we have a, a number of businesses along State Street here uh, that are helping us out, uh, just allowing people to gather in front of their place and put um, our uh, donation cans. If you look down State Street, you can see our red and white cans for Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. That's where you'll, you'll deposit your cans. So it's the Monday before Thanksgiving and we are out throughout Harrisburg delivering a little positive Thanksgiving cheer. We have the community police van and uh, 30 turkeys and all the fixings uh, very happily donated from the Turkish Cultural Center of Pennsylvania. 
Uh, we're here with volunteers from the Cultural Center, as well as our community policing coordinator, Mr. Dave Botero, who helped us identify uh, some of the families in need in Harrisburg. Dave, can you talk a little bit about uh, how the families were chosen and uh, what sorts of relationships they represent? The families were chosen uh, basically working and collaborating with our neighbors. Uh, families were identified by need um, in all the neighborhoods throughout Harrisburg. I would like to redirect your attention back to the State Holocaust Monument. The stainless steel core which rises up from the center of the sculpture represents the Jewish people. Reaching above the barbed wire demonstrating the struggles for existence of the Jewish people throughout history. In the artist's view, this symbolizes hope. The dove, long a symbol of peace, purity, and hope, will serve in remembrance of the six million Jews who perished in the crematoriums and gas chambers in Europe. Six doves will be released, representing one per million of lost lives due to perceived difference, hatred, and intolerance. The sculpture's base consists of six stars of David. The final six doves will re be released to convey a hope for the future lived with greater tolerance for all humanity, for progress toward acceptance of all people and groups, and for a goal of breaking down oppressive power structures which perpetuate bigotry and intolerance. At this time, we will release the doves. about kids with no hope and, and it sounds kind of fluffy and and tangential but but it's real and I'll, I'll share experience with you we have a uh, our prison SCI Pine Grove is where all our youthful offenders go and I gotta tell you it takes me a week to get over visiting that place right. and I, I'm not exaggerating you see these baby faces in here I mean baby faces and maybe that's just indicative of me getting old all right so <laughs> I'll throw that out there but you see these young faces in there and I, I, I go cell to cell at every, every, uh, every seg unit in the system every year. Um, and I talk to these kids and I hear the same thing or the same theme time after time. So, um, if, and if you're a juvenile, you're, gonna, you're doing 10 to 20, I, I would say at minimum, because you've been certified as an adult and all that stuff. And I say, so what are you going to do when you get out? Mr. Wetzel, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to get out, I'm going to get my hustle on for a little bit. But that's indicative of hope. These kids, and, and the other thing I hear, especially from the young lifers, is listen, I'm going to be dead by age 25. Right. Right. So what does it matter? And I'll just put it in, in my word. Look, if I was going to be dead in six months, no disrespect to my kids, I wouldn't have a savings account. Why would you? So hope, and hope doesn't cost a thing. We spend a lot of time talking about and, and uh, money and this and that. What does it cost you to mentor or to get engaged in, in young uh, children's life in your community right now today? Nothing. I know you. Distant, hard, storm winds and lightning flashes, tender, not to be touched, a bomb born of young lust and needed attention, statistical data that justifies the latest brand, band aid program that covers you. Pouting lips and angry eyes, teeth sucking sounds, and language that smells like garbage flowing from you like water. 
a visual image of lack and need and not caring and not knowing and not wanted in most neighborhoods. I know you. This is a 357 Magnum. It opens like this with the cylinder, the barrel and the opening here is quite larger than, than on the pellet gun. This will also do serious damage. And this was taken in the same burglary that the 50 uh, caliber was taken in. We're asking the general public, if you know of anybody possessing a handgun and they shouldn't have one, please call us, please. Guns were made to kill. They are made for war and for hunting. They're made for military, police, and gun buffs, people who like to collect weapons. Uh, we had an unfortunate situation where one juvenile was accidentally shot and killed by his friend because they didn't understand the mechanisms of the gun and how the gun functioned. We're asking all juveniles to please put down the guns. Please do not possess or handle any handgun. If your friend is out there handling a handgun, you know that they're carrying one, please call the police. If you love your friend and if you want to save your friend's life, please call the police so we can take that handgun from them. Thank you. A lot of us were impacted by what happened in Ferguson, Missouri. Concerns and questions came up that I heard regarding our teenage children and the relationship with the police, the justice system, the police department, racial profiling and excessive law enforcement. My officers are put in constant danger every day when we go after people wanted for robberies, for homicides. And these people that are out here committing these homicides are not using little guns. They're using big guns. Um, I do use the uh, SWAT team when um, um, we do go search these other people, but I can guarantee you that the SWAT team, the search team, whatever that um, you want to call them, they're not out there to bring any harm to anybody. They're out there to bring a uh, resolution, peaceful resolution to get the people to surrender. I am not going to put my officers in any situation that they can't win. I'm not going to stand That's by right. and watch my officers get gunned down when they're tough out there for them. Right. You know, just like victims have families, my officers also have families too. And I got to take care That's of right. people. I'd just like to thank the families and the loved ones of the new officers. I, I don't think there's any greater, greater privilege, greater duty, responsibility, greater honor than to serve in a position where you put your, your physical safety on the line for the protection and the safety of others. Um, to me, this is, it's not just a job, it's not just a career, it's kind of a calling, and I think it's a privilege to work with men and women like the ones that we're going to swear in today. I, uh, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I shall support, obey, and defend, that I shall support, obey, and defend, the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the United States of America, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and that I will, to the best of my ability, and I will, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office as a Harrisburg police officer. As a Harrisburg police officer with fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations. A world of color by Sinai Wallace. Color is the best thing about our world. It paints and decorates everything on earth. Without color, everything will be bland. It's like having a music without a band or a beach without sand. It would just be plain boring. The color you see is amazing. Most people take it for granted. To look through our eyes and experience a valuable prize is extraordinary. If we look at our world just a little bit closer, you'll be able to actually live in our world of color. Unique was the word. The word that describes the place. The cool place where mysterious people laugh to socialize of all kinds of delightful and colorful foods that laid on tables being savored. The foods tasted different as if they were all from their own alien wor worlds. These words describe the multifaceted combination of unique foods and a true place of harmony. My first time at the Midtown Scholar by Emerald Pennell. The Midtown Scholar, a place filled with many books, turning, flipping pages just to get further deeper with the information or plot. 
With classical music playing soft, steady, and jazzy beat calming me, with 300,000 different titles that take me back in time, filling up my oversized intellectual brain. There's a cafe with delicious pastries and sweet-smelling cappuccinos filling up my green belly. Poets and students sharing their work with emotional and touching poems like eyes staring into the soul. I may be new to this world as an alien, but at least I had a good time at the Midtown Scholar. So this is the aquaponics system that was made at Marshall Math Science Academy. It was uh, courtesy to Bob Welsh. Yeah, he helped us uh, build this along with uh, these two guys right here. Uh, Nicole and uh, Kirk. Right, what? Kirk. 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 Right. And right here, we're going to um, guide you through the process. So I'll start. Right here is the big fish tank. The fish um, groups and excretes up ammonia. And eventually, it'll, it will eventually go to the bioreactor where uh, the bioreactor houses bacteria that takes the ammonia that comes from the fish's excrements and turns it into nitrites. And then the nitrites gets turned into nitrates, which then gets pumped into the plant area. And over here in the plant area, we're growing lettuces and various herbs. And after the nitrates are taken out and the plants eat them, what it goes, it, it's, the water is purified, and then what it, it goes through the system and back to the fish so they can live better in the environment that they are in. Those are my kids, you asked? Five. Five, ten, and twelve. Which one do you think is Chauncey? The uh, no, the one on the right, that's right. And the blue shirt, Chauncey. He's pretty good. There's my wife, Catherine, when we were married 18 years ago. And who knows why I have Lego? That is a good question. Yes. Why is there Lego on my desk? Do you know who it is? Really? Really? You know, ben this Franklin. is a very hard question. If I, if, if Lego made Ben Franklin, I would have Ben Franklin on my desk. I am pretty sure that Lego does not. Uh, but I can pick it up. Let me show you. This is William Shakespeare, who is a very famous author. Uh, that is uh, a literary character. That is Hamlet, and he's holding, he's holding a skull. So that's pretty neat. Everybody line up. Okay, one at a time. One at a time in the comfortable chair. I'll have to get an official pen. Please try the chair. And if you'd like to, sign your name on this sheet of paper. And this will be, it's sort of like giving your signature to important documents. Memos, executive orders, no, I don't know. Lots of things. Oh, very pretty. Okay, well done. by far the most comfortable chair I have ever had. I have a picture of my father in this office. Anybody know where he might be? They do, don't they? I have another interesting fact. Somewhere in this office there is a picture of two people that I married. It was a double wedding. Wasn't that neat? Okay. Very nice. You all are doing an excellent job signing your signatures. Do you think I need to work on my signature? Probably. Make it a little bit more attractive. It is 3D. Isn't that neat? Yes. What is this? <coughs> Those are business cards. Would you like a business card? Oh, I'm going to have to give everybody a business card now, aren't I? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's how you can contact the office. Please contact the office. There you go. If you have follow-up questions on this visit, Yes, of course you can. Happy. 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 Good morning, everyone. This is an exciting day in the city of Harrisburg, a day that has come together to work on a solution. This has been a long, long journey on this trash road, but we're only halfway to our clean destination. But like every journey, it all begins with the first step. I would like to thank the mayor, the public works director, the deputy director, Harrisburg City Council, the residents of Harrisburg, and all of you, the media, that have gone with me in some of the dirtiest places in the city. Goodness, did you look at this street? It is filthy. Not yet, it isn't. 
<laughs> now it's covered in garbage. Excuse me, young lady, you better pick that up. The trash you just threw on the floor? Mom, look around you. This place is already messed up. If I pick up that one piece of trash, it's not going to make this place any cleaner. Don't play games with me. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Clean streets, clean streets. We can all have clean streets. Clean streets, clean streets. Then we make the choice. Clean streets, clean streets. We can all have clean streets. Clean streets, clean streets. Then we make the choice. Everybody, clean streets, clean, clean streets. We can all have. summer enrichment program. It's part of the Harrisburg School District's summer enrichment program and tonight is the um, final um, meeting or final get together that we're having to honor the girls that started here at the King Center. So the King Center is gathering tonight to have a meal and and, and you know most of the time with, when people do things um, they, they come around a meal and so we're coming around a meal tonight to tell our girls that we're proud of them and all that they were able to accomplish. So one of the things that we're doing are we're going to have like a musical, it's just a musical, we're doing Annie, we're doing the cup song, we're doing mostly all the songs that the cool songs and one of the old songs and it's so cool because we get to do it with our friends and like I'm all around my friends and I get to have fun so it's really cool. Um, all you, well, it's cool because you get to go on trips. Uh, what we do is we're a sisterhood right here. We're sisterhood. This is a sisterhood. We stick together and we believe that we can do anything that's, anything that's possible. We can only scratch the surface of what we can do with this project. There are boxes upon boxes. They've been out to Reservoir Park to see all the materials. There are a lot of materials to be done. Kind of it's different, like, different years, the 1950s and the 18th. Hundreds, 1700s, I think, to Harrisburg. Yeah. We are digitizing materials from the Harrisburg City Archives, materials that haven't been accessed in quite some time, and we are preserving them. And we're doing that in a couple of different ways. One way is using the high speed scanner that you see here, and this allows us to take documents through. Now, it is a challenge because very few archival materials can go through this scanner, but we have scanned municipal records. We've also scanned a very important document about the monuments and landmarks here in the city of Harrisburg, and we've digitized about 4,500 pages this way. So we've created a number of pieces PDFs of important city documents for future research through this device right here. There are new documents, there are old documents as well, but it's all very important because this stuff hasn't really been accessible for a very long time and its history really and um, it's very <clears throat> it's very useful to I think historians and researchers later on as well as maybe people that want to find things, maybe people who were related to those who wrote correspondence or those who were in the pictures or just things like that. This team is launching a soft opening on the on their store today, Urban Expression. No, no, no. Welcome to Urban Expression. Come check it out with me. Here we're having live music from local artists, and we have refurbished furniture and sculptures and local artists' art. We also have dance wear from Dance Skin. For years and years in the arts and culture uh, realm, Jump Street's had a lot of success and a lot of joy doing arts-based workforce development. And here we have custom t-shirts of many designs. We're working on real unmet needs, like the city digitization project is largely a project that wouldn't get done. It's not in the city budget. But with the wheelhouse resources, we bake in the student wage, we bake in the private sector training. All of a sudden, it's a lot more affordable for an IMR Digital to come along and do a low-cost lease and, and get involved with training the students on the gear. And voila, you've got an unmet municipal need being met as a, as a piece of educational enterprise. So we're flipping the script on that. We got needs all over town, but town is a beautiful, city of Harrisburg is a beautiful campus to learn. So we're turning unmet need into campuses to learn. 
Hello, Harrisburg and beyond. How are you today? Are you ready for a great parade? Say I think we should do an official countdown and then magically the tree will become lit when I we get to right. the end. So I, I think we should all count down from 12. Does that sound pretty appropriate? Are we ready? We're going to stand back. I will start the countdown and hopefully this is going to work. Here we go. Are we ready? Let's do it. 12, 12 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Because I believe strongly in three things. First, with hard work and determination, anything is possible. We can indeed bridge the divides of race, class, and geography. We can and must lay the groundwork for a long and lasting recovery for our city and for our region. Second, I believe that we all have to be part of the solution. If we listen and respect one another's points of views, collectively, we can change Harrisburg. Finally, I believe that the moment is now. The eyes of the nation and indeed the world are upon us, and we must seize the moment. Carpe diem, as I used to tell my seventh and eighth grade Latin students. <laughs> Sneak up on the stage. What's up, Devin? <laughs> Me and us bands 